Most people figure out pretty quickly there's almost always multiple ways to do the same thing in Photoshop. Hi, I'm Dave Pross. I want to show you my three favorite ways for adding a watermark to my photos. That will include making a brush, using a shape from Illustrator, and using a nice add-on called Adobe Watermark. Let's take a look. The first method in, involves turning something into a brush, and that's probably the easiest method, but you still have to kind of plan ahead. I signed a piece of paper using a black pen, and I tried to make sure I was on a white piece of paper with black writing because the way a brush is defined is whatever's black is your brush, whatever's white is see-through. So you don't have to put things on a separate layer. All you have to do is think black is the brush, white is see-through. I want to make sure that it actually is pure black and white. So I'm going to use levels and just make sure, click on the white background with the white eyedropper and click on some of the black just to make sure. I want to really make sure that it's pure black, pure white. I've also photographed this fairly high resolution because although you can increase the size of a brush, the quality suffers a little bit anytime you increase it. So I'd rather create a brush which is too big and scale it down. Once I have that, I don't have to do anything else except under the edit menu, define brush preset. And it'll show me over here how big this brush is. So if I click OK, once I've done that, I don't need this document anymore because it served its purpose which was to make a brush. Now in this particular case, this photo happens to be a camera raw smart object, which means I couldn't paint on it directly anyway. But even if I could, I tend to put my watermark, at least initially, on a blank layer just to give me the option of changing my mind and repositioning it and so on. So I look over at my foreground color. It's currently black. I'd like it to be white. I tend to always paint everything at 100% opacity and then let the layer be where you change the opacity, just in case you change your mind. The problem is if you paint it at 50%, you can't really go any higher all that easily. So let's go and find the brush we defined. It'll be the last one we just made. And you'll see it's quite large. So I'm gonna use the left bracket key to scale it down to the size that I want. I'd rather be a little too big even at this stage because when I do one click here to add it, I still have the option using free transform command or control T to scale it down a little further if I want to. And I can also come over to the layer and lower the opacity in case I want my little watermark signature to be semi-see-through. The other reason I put on a separate layer is after you look at it, you may decide that you want your watermark somewhere else. Not as much in this case, but at least you can. And then finally, I would save a copy that's back to being a flattened JPEG. But this way, this is kind of a one-off Anytime you need a signature, the nice thing is it's now built into Photoshop. It's a preset for my brush. So all I have to do is have a photograph open, add a layer, click with my brush. So that's the simplest way. And the only trick really, again, is uh, suggest that you define the brush bigger than you need rather than smaller. Now, if you have Adobe Illustrator, there's a couple of options you can do to take your design into Photoshop, but with a few possible problems or challenges, shall we say. So here's my logo in Illustrator. You can see it's just a series of shapes. It's got some shading in it, and one of them is just pure white. I want to use that in Photoshop, so I select it all in Illustrator and hit Copy. When I sp switch back to Photoshop, when I hit New Document, it's going to automatically make one the size of what I copy. But I want it to be bigger to give myself more room to play. And click OK. And then when I go to Paste, here's all the options it gives me. Paste as a smart object is a great idea if you're trying to incorporate it, the artwork in one document, you want to be able to go back and forth. But I want to embed it into Photoshop as something I can use. So my first option would be to paste as pixels, and then I can resize it to the size that I want with good quality, hit enter, and then it's the same as before. Whatever's black is my brush, whatever's white is see-through, and whatever's gray is somewhat. So this would create a brush that would have some see-through areas and may or may not be what I want, but at least it's easy to do. If I delete that and paste again, I could also just paste as a path and that's just gonna simply be the outline. Then here in Photoshop, I could take that path and start to fill in the shapes and then make it a shape that way. Or when I hit paste, the other option is shape layer. And the only problem with this, it works, but as you'll see, the problem is here that it's lost the fact that I had shading and that I had my one piece that was white. But if you want to just simply take your logo and make it any one color, here's how you do it. You paste it as a shape, and once you've done that, you can choose 
define custom shape. Now this looks similar to a brush, but the difference is this shape is very scalable. So unlike a brush where we said you can't scale it up very large without losing quality, here I can now go to my custom shape tool, go down to the very bottom where that logo was just created, and then choose my color. I'm going to choose kind of a gold color perhaps. And here the advantage is as I go to click and drag, you can see I can make it very small or really big and I'm not losing any quality like I would ultimately if I scaled up a brush. So that's the advantage of a shape layer. It's very scalable, but you can't have any real kind of shading it in the same way that you could otherwise. Now I mentioned in the introduction that, that there are three ways. There's actually a fourth way I just realized as I was talking about this, because the other option, I suppose, if you didn't have a logo and you didn't have Illustrator, is you could use the shape tool in Photoshop to create something. So let's just say for the sake of argument, you wanted this, so I've got it set to be a shape. I'm going to click and drag like that and then I want to put a second shape in the middle of it. So this for the sake of argument is going to be my logo. Actually let's do text instead now that I think about it. It might be more interesting. So we'll just put a big letter A in the middle. I don't know why that's our logo. Let's just go with it. So in order to make that into a custom shape, I have the problem where if I go to the edit menu, you'll see define custom shape is not available. I could make it a brush, mind you, but not a shape. And if I want to make that kind of scalable shape, here's what I'd have to do. Take my type layer and convert it to a shape. Now I've got two different shapes. I'd have to take these two shapes and I'm going to choose merge shapes. Even though they're layers, when I select them both because they're shape layers, I can turn them into one shape. Now very often that will solve the problem and you can just now choose define custom shape. But just on the off chance it doesn't, you may have to take the path selection tool and select the paths first. But now I can choose define custom shapes. So even though I didn't start in Illustrator, I'm able to create my own customized shape using this built-in ability. Now the other way that's an option in Photoshop, it's not built in, you have to go and get it, but it is free on russellbrown.com. You can see Russell has a series of scripts and add-ons and one of them, once you install it, it's a self-installer, it would show up here under the extensions menu under window, Adobe Watermark. And the beauty of this is even if you've never seen it before, it doesn't really matter because it kind of goes through the steps and says, what would you like to use as your logo and how would you like to apply it? In order for Adobe Watermark to work, I realize I need to take this as if it was a regular layer. So I'm going to rasterize it so it's no longer a smart object just for this purpose. But the beauty of Adobe Watermark is even though you may have never seen it before, it basically walks you through the steps. So the first step is use the file you're going to want to use. So I've already chosen an Illustrator file. You could have a transparent PSD or a PNG or anything that you want to use, an EPS file, I suppose, or you can even just use some text. But what the nice part about this is it's really meant for a batch process, but I want to make sure it works first before I go ahead and batch it. I can actually tear this off here so we can see more easily what's going to happen. So for now, I'm just going to use this open one open image because that's the one I want to use for now. And just to be safe, I think I'm going to save this image first because it seems to me it's going to ask me to have it saved. So, but the whole point is I have one of many images. So I use the open image at first and at the end we'll come back to this step to apply it to many. So at this point, I decide where do I want it? Lower right, upper right, wherever I want. I think I want it. The other settings, I'm not really sure of in terms of scaling. So I'm just going to hit preview and then it will very quickly show me that Okay, that's not bad, but it definitely needs to be much smaller, like 50%, and maybe the opacity about 80%. Then I hit preview again, and it does it again, and I think I might want it lower right. Now, the only thing it won't do is if you wish you had a white logo, you'd have to go back and select a different file to do that, because all this is doing is positioning. But let's pretend to say, Gary, we love the way that looks. Now what I would do is go back to this step, and instead select an entire folder. So again, Adobe Watermark is not built in, but it's free from russellbrown.com and you can install it and use it in CS4, 
four, I think the first one was CS4, CS5, CS6, CC, it all works. And this is a nice way when you've already created a graphic elsewhere. And by the way, this one, it'll come in preserving all colors and everything else you've done. So as you can see, lots of different options for you. Hopefully one of those three ways will be the way you'll choose to make your life simpler by adding a watermark. Please be sure to check out my other videos here on YouTube as well as my two websites, pscs6support.com and learningphotoshop.cc. I'm Dave Cross. Thanks for watching.